is that we figured out how to do is how to manipulate the chihuahuas, okay? Fundamentally, that's what we've done. And, but we can't see them, so we have different ways that we can analyze this. So one of them is fairly really simple. This is just threads, okay? But if I take the balloon and charge it, and I bring that near it, okay, you're kind of going to get the same effect that I had with my hand, okay? So chihuahuas are mobile. So when I bring this close, why do those threads become attracted to the balloon? Uneven amount of chihuahuas. Yeah, the chihuahuas here run away. That leaves the St. Bernards. They're attracted to these chihuahuas. There you go. Now, this is kind of a slow process. It works, but it takes a while. So then they said, hey, is there a more efficient way to generate excess chihuahuas? Hmm. So they developed this, is what's known as a Van der Graaff generator, okay? And it's got a rubber band that spins, and it basically strips off the electrons. So when I turn this on, okay? So right away, boom, okay? So what caused that to happen? A lot of chihuahuas. Right, a lot of chihuahuas, right? And so the chihuahuas said, whoa, this is bad, right? So they all had to go somewhere. So the chihuahuas were all trying to run away from each other. So those chihuahuas ended up there on the end of the strings. But they don't like each other. Now, that was enough to overcome the force of gravity. So if I turn this on again, though, we can get the same effect, okay? Now... When I move my hand, it's like kind of the Jedi thing, right? So I can move my hand and make those move, but I'm not touching it. But again, it goes back to an imbalance of chihuahuas. chihuahuas, okay? Chihuahuas don't like each other. That allows a force to be exerted. But again, that's not something that you can see. So, so... Put a few paper clips on here. Or not paper clips, but it's paper. So now if I turn it on. So you all think everybody says, oh, gravity is strong, right? Well, what happened as soon as I turned that on? What did they do? They ran away. They ran away. Why? Lots of a lot of chihuahuas. chihuahuas. There are so many chihuahuas that it overcame the gravitational pull that was trying to pull them down. Bam, they went flying. So now we have a problem. So now we've got these little bits of paper. Well, I'll take this balloon and I'll move that over that. So now I've got the bits of paper stuck to the balloon. Why? The force of the attraction. Why? Chihuahuas. <laughs> Got to get more specific than just chihuahuas. They're, the chihuahuas in the paper are attracted to or the other dogs in the in the balloon are um, they want to be with the chihuahuas in the paper, so they stick to them. Beautiful. So on the bottom side, that's on the on the side away from the balloon. Those that you have excess chihuahuas on the bottom side because those chihuahuas ran away, because they don't like those. But the St. Bernards that are on the top side of the paper that stuck to the balloon, they like them, they're going, hey, little buddy, let's chill out, okay? So you can do that. Now, in an extreme case, and hopefully the air isn't too humid that this doesn't work. So I'll take a can. Oh. So that's a rock and pepper, right? Mm -hmm. Hold on, I need to get that out. Watch out. It's pretty much empty. Get ready in this color? <laughs> yes. You had to record that? Yeah. yeah. Action shot. Action shot. Okay.
So I am now, the world's worst cameraman after all. <laughs> take the balloon. What's supposed to happen is the pan rolls. But unfortunately, the air is really humid this morning. Ah, there it goes. So now, notice I can make the can roll. He's a wizard. Without actually touching it. What's happening? Chihuahuas. 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 Mm -hmm. So, the chihuahuas that make up the can don't like the chihuahuas that are on the balloon. So you have a little tiny segment where the chihuahuas have ran away. So then what's going to make that thing roll then is that you're continuously changing the distribution of those chihuahuas. And so then you get a net attractive of force, you create a torque, boom, you can make it roll. Okay. Then they said, hmm, is there yet more ways to produce excess electrons? So, we're going to have this. So, Danny, I need you to hold this. Okay. Just like that. Okay? Now, so this is generating extremely high, actually, go shut up, go shut up, lights real quick. My God. Okay. Dan, Danny's our white man. Go, Danny. So now when I take this and I bring it close, notice that it begins to generate light. And if I get close enough, I get that arc. Now, when you notice what happens, why does the light stop when it gets to my hand? It has it acting on the swallows. What did you say, Jean? It has it acting on the swallows. Are they attacking them? You the same remote. Kind of. Electrons and electricity take the path of these resistance. So what happens is that when it gets to my hand, those chihuahuas go, we can either keep going down the tube or we can flow over my hand. It's easier for them to flow over my hand than it is to keep going through the tube. So if I get this close enough, and you get that arc, that's basically a small stream of biting. Now, you need to come close to see this next part. So, I've got a syringe, and on the end of the syringe, there's a, there's a nail, okay? So, I'm going to try and draw the plasma and suck it into the syringe, okay? What? Now you gotta watch really carefully this part right in here. It isn't like it isn't gonna like glow dramatically. Okay? If I get this to pull off, it's gonna happen right there on that end. So I pull that back. If you notice just inside of there, I'm pulling that plasma. Hold on. into that syringe. So you can just see it inside of there. So that, all I'm doing is allowing that plasma, those high energy chihuahuas, to excite the gas that's inside of there so it's like a fluid. So when I pull that back, I'm giving that, that plasma a place for it to go. Okay, so shut that off. Okay. Oh, I got this. You get some lights back on. Okay. The action shot of Danny turning the lights on. <laughs> Woo! Woo! That was impressive. Okay, so if you look at the understanding of the universe, and these are all what they called parlor tricks, okay? It was, well, rubber balloon, and you can make things 
get charged. You can pick up bits of paper. So up until the early 1900s, if I was giving a lecture on fundamental forces, at this point I would be done. I would say we have gravity and we have the electrostatic force. But the electrostatic force, as you all just saw, is actually much stronger than the gravitational force. If it wasn't, I couldn't take the balloon and pick up the bits of paper. If gravity was stronger than the electrostatic force, I couldn't pick up the paper because gravity would continue to hold it down. But they really didn't, they knew the electrostatic force was there, but they really didn't know what it was. But they knew they could generate electricity, they could do some cool things with it, but that was about it. So at the time, and this is in the early 1900s, the scientific community was actually like almost depressed because they thought we got gravity because of Newton's laws of motion. We can do parlor tricks with electricity. They didn't even know that there were galaxies outside of our own, okay, because we didn't have that technology. And literally, the, the, the thinking of the scientific community at that point was that there's nothing left to figure out. We can tweak the constants, maybe refine the value of the universal gravitational constant, maybe, you know, tweak with some things, figure out how to, you know, make new compounds. But literally, the scientific community in late 1800s, early 1900s, it wasn't a good thing because they're literally like, we've worked ourselves out of a job. There's nothing left to do. So along comes J.J. Thompson. Anybody remember what J.J. Thompson did if you hearken back to your Kim One days? Cathode rays. Yes, and from the cathode rays, which is very similar to what I did with the fluorescent tube, he discovered the electron. electron, okay? So Thompson discovered the electron, so for which he eventually won a Nobel Prize. His son developed or found, I think, the neutron and also won a Nobel Prize in physics as well. So it's only like one of the very few like father-son figures that have ever won Nobel Prizes. So they found the electrons, which are like the chihuahuas. But this created a problem. Because could we be here having this discussion if the universe only existed of electrons? Why not? Think of those bits of paper. Because they would only repel each other. Yeah, they'd only repel each other. We could not be here having this discussion. If the universe only created electrons, we wouldn't be here. If the universe only created protons, we wouldn't be here. If the universe only created neutrons, we wouldn't be here. Because what do you know about neutrons? Neutral. They're neutral. So if the universe created mass, but it didn't have a charge, we wouldn't be here having this discussion. So once they discovered electrons, they said, wow, there's got to be protons as well, or positively charged particles. And then they let, that led into, well, what does that arrangement of particles look like? So let's go to the front, and we'll continue the discussion. Colin, what do you want to say? Uh, do a somersault. Do a flip. Yeah. Here? No. So stop that camera. I forgot. I got to go. I'm going to be right back. Hold on. Hold on.